Hello legends and super legends. Welcome to Velo Harmony. Today I wanted to follow up all the cadence videos and the spinning videos I, that I have been talking about. And this seemed like a perfect lead into the topic that I want to address today about how to prevent saddle sores. And if you can't prevent them, how do you deal with them once you get them? And the reason I'm leading into this topic is because all the spinning and the high cadence and all of that, if your setup is not right, you will have a lot of chafing. You may even have some infection in your follicles. And so there are different things that cause saddle sore. I made some notes just to make sure that I stayed on point. And the main thing I want to focus on there are two different things that causes the major saddle sores that we get. The first thing that causes that is chafing. Chafing is basically from friction from just rubbing the wrong places on, you know, in your soft tissue or even on your sit bones area and also boils that can develop from infected follicles. Now, if you don't address these properly, they can become a serious issue and lead into cysts. And if you get a cyst under there, you can sit and you will have to have it lanced basically in a, in a hospital or a surgical center. You would need some medical care to get rid of that. So it can become a serious issue. So, what I want to talk about is how do you deal with the, ch the chafing? How do you prevent that? So there are several things you can do to prevent that. Of course, the first thing to look at is your fit. Okay. If your bike, your saddle is too high, you will get a lot of chafing when you pedal. And I've got a, a spare saddle here that I wanted to use as a display and use the, my, the palm of my hand as, as a, an example. So let's say your saddle height is fine but the fore aft is off. So instead of sitting here, you can see where there is no space between my hand to represent the underside of your rear. But if I move back here like this, you'll see a little bit of a gap. So if I'm, if I'm sitting back here and I'm doing it from the side, you can kind of see, let me turn this way. Maybe it will look better. Yeah. So if I'm sitting, instead of sitting in, the, this is when you're in the saddle. Okay. So that your legs are free. On the side I'm using my finger to represent your legs if you're sitting too far back it interferes with your spinning your ability to spin anyway and what happens is where your legs should be here going down is back here so there's a lot of material here on the saddle that will start rubbing in in the soft tissue under your under your way you sit and so instead of you being seated in a spot like this to where your legs can freely move when you're too far back in the wrong spot you can get chafing from there you can get the the chamois can start rubbing under there the perineum area and that can cause like a burning sensation and if you if you if you let that stay too long or you stay in your shorts too long you can get uh, bacterial growth or whatever that can it can lead to an infection now that's just a cursory example of having the saddle out of place. Now, if the saddle's too high, it doesn't matter. Even if you're in the right spot and the saddle's too high, what's going to happen is as you pedal, your hips will rock. So if you're behind somebody and you see their hips rolling as they pedal, your hips should be stationary. If your hips are rolling from side to side, that's all the more rubbing that's going on under there because you should not be moving like this on the saddle. It should be stationary as your legs move. So if my fingers represent your leg, your legs should move where this is steady. If you're rolling like that, that's another, that's rubbing. And anytime you have rubbing, rubbing, you will have chafing. And that can even infect the follicles of hair under there to where it will get infected almost like a, an ingrown hair kind of thing when it starts out. And if you don't deal with it, like take a pin and prick it because they can be small and you can't sit on them. They're very tender. And as soon as you get there, you want to deal with that. If you're having persistent saddle sores, your setup is off. Something's off. You need to get it addressed. There's no point. Spend the money to get it addressed because if you ignore it, not only will you not want to enjoy your bike, but you might end up going to the hospital to have it lance if it turns into a cyst. And you will need to take some time off the bike when you get that because you can't continue to sit on that spot. Okay, because what your body's telling you is something's wrong. Something you're doing is off. So I use that as an example. The other thing to be aware of is you can have the perfect saddle setup, but 
Let's say you did a long ride, longer than you're normally used to, in the rain. The rain and your skin, they don't get along too well. So you're in the rain and if it's cold or whatever, it's even worse. So when you're doing that, use some chamois cream. I have chamois cream. I usually don't use it unless I'm doing a very long ride and it's going to be wet. Then I'm going to use it. And in that instance, I put it on my body. I don't like pu putting it on the chamois and then pulling off, pulling on the shorts and get that wet feeling. So it's almost like you're putting on lotion in a way. That's the way I use it. But I don't use it that much. I've had the cream sitting there for a long time. So normally on my everyday riding, I don't use chamois cream. You shouldn't have to either. If you're using a good quality pad in your shorts, your shorts are good quality shorts with good pads. Most of the new pads nowadays have antibacterial treatment, which prevents the growth of bacteria. But also remember that you must never wear your shorts more than once without washing them. Okay? Even if you're someplace where, say, you're camping in the woods and you don't have access to facilities or whatever, turn the shorts inside out. Put some soap or something on the, the pad. And if you just wash the pad that you sit on, that's better than not washing it at all. Never rewear your shorts without washing them. And also after riding, don't sit around in the wet shorts forever. Because if you do have some kind of issue with your skin or chafing or whatever, then you're not going to allow it to continue to grow. You'll give your skin a chance to dry out. So get out of your shorts as soon as you can and switch. But the biggest reason people have saddle swords is because they're sitting wrong. Like I tried to demonstrate. Instead of sitting in the saddle here, they're sitting back here. So these areas on the saddle are rubbing where they should not be. You should be sitting here so that your legs can be free on this narrow part of the saddle. If you're too far back or too far forward and your shorts bunch up and you get that rubbing, it can start with a burning sensation and it can lead to different saddle sores or, you know, it can infect the follicles of hair under there. So if you're having problems with that, you need to get it revisited. You need to get your saddle position looked at. And it's mostly caused by a saddle that's too high or four aft that's out of whack. That's one thing to keep in mind. Now, the other things I wanted to talk, talk about is don't depend only on, oh, well, you know, I've, I've got a perfect saddle position. And I'm going to just ignore this because this is just a one-off. If you're riding and something is bothering you under there, it tells you something's off. It could be that you bought a pair of shorts that the legs were not tight enough. They're not holding in place and they get bunched up. And anything that bunches up, even if your position's perfect, you get a lot of material bunched up, it can cause a problem. And that's the reason why I always make the comment about you get what you pay for. So get good shorts. There's no point in cutting corners on that because... It's not worth the alternative. Get good quality shorts that fit you well. The legs should not move. They should grab you. They should stay in place. And there should be no excess material. They should be skin tight. They should hold your body like a glove. There should be nothing flapping on your shorts. Okay, because that's what will lead to things, material. That will, any excess material is basically something that can bunch up and cause you to have chafing. And if you have chafing that will irritate your skin, it can lead to infection and other things. So it's not just the saddle being off. The same kind of rubbing you can get from a saddle that's too high, you can also get from shorts that bunch up. So I just wanted to quickly cover that today and leave your experiences below that, you, that you've experienced with different issues with saddle sores. But I just wanted to summarize by saying you should not be having saddle sores. If you're having saddle sores, something's up with your fit. And as you can see, everything comes back to fit. So just make sure that you deal with it because if you ignore it, it can become worse. It can even become a cyst that you require that you go to the hospital to have it lanced. Because if it gets to where it's a cyst, there's nothing you can do yourself. They'll have to lance that bad boy. And it's not a whole lot of fun. I've never had, thankfully, I've never had to deal with that, but I know people who have had and I've read about additional people who've gone through that and it's not a whole lot of fun so please don't ignore that and you don't want them to stop you from getting out there and getting your miles okay so no matter what don't let anything stop you